Dear Judge, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm by name of Gwaneza Nikes Kelly from Ivera High School with Jerry and Sonia. Today's motion is this house believes that making Rwanda's economy cashless will create more jobs more than we have today. First of all, we have to understand some key, po key points in this motion. Cashless economy, this is where, we, this is where economic transactions are done using uh, uh, digital means like credit cards, uh, debit cards, among others. Um, another keyword is um, creating more jobs than what we have today. Hereby, we are going to be talking about. We are not going to be talking about how uh, the, the mo that if we are not cashless, then uh, jobs won't be available. We're just going to talk about that a cashless economy will bring in more new jobs. Uh, on what we have today. So, when you look at the status quo, the rate of unemployment in Rwanda is 13.2%, according to wikipedia.com. Uh, and when you look at the rate of unemployment in cashless economy, uh, when, uh, when you look at people who are employed, among 86% of them, 27% of them are, cashless, uh, are in cashless employment, which means that, uh, and, this, uh, and the source of this is statistics, randanationalstatistics.gov.gua. And all of this shows that uh, with this, we shall be able to create more jobs. Now, you may be asking, what is our action plan? How are we going to be creating more jobs? First of all, look at the areas employed by cashless economy. The mobile money, the, like for example, mobile money. So, uh, first of all, our action plan will take a time lapse of at least two years. Um, we're going to first uh, access all the villages to reach the whole country. In, like we're going to outreach the whole, in all corners of the country to look for, uh, to train people. For, uh, I can give you an example. Uh, in Rwanda, there are many people who have not yet started. But if you go and look in banks, people who are dealing with cash transactions, they must have some degree. But look at those illiterate people who, are not, who have not studied. Those people are the ones which are trained to use mobile money. To use mobile money, even a child of a swan can learn how to use it without something which is too complicated, which, which means this thing will be easy to us. And we shall also install machines in Cars in, in cars and shops, so that uh, people can people can get used to them. People can can um, can be trained, so that we can be used to that cashless economy. And therefore, people will be getting more jobs. Look at the people who are who are working on ATMs. ATMs are designed by people. They are industries. Which look at all those people who are who are employed in these industries. Look at the mechanics who come and repair them. Look at the uh, the, the drivers who come and take someone to, 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 to keep money. Look at everyone. This doesn't mean that jobs won't be there, but instead it will create more jobs. Look at the security guard. When you go around and look at the ATMs, you always find the security guard. Yes, we know it's a machine, but that doesn't mean that it's going to work on A machine doesn't work on its own. So it will create more jobs because a person will have to program it. A person will have to create it. People will always be coming with more innovations and they'll be getting more jobs employed in companies, these IT companies, and therefore people will get more jobs. So this is what we are uh, we're interested today. Your point? My point was, um, are those ATM machines made in Rwanda? These ATM machines are not made in Rwanda. But we are not talking about things made in Rwanda. We are talking about creating more jobs. That's what he said. And making Rwanda's economy. Therefore, when, we, when, when those ATMs are made from somewhere else, People are, are, are the ones who program them. People are, are the, in Rwanda are the ones who go and train others. People learn how, that. And also those teachers, they'll be also uh, training. So therefore, Dear judge, you should come to our side. We are going to listen from our next speakers how this is, how this is, uh, this motion is pure positive, and you are going to get that people are getting more jobs, including some of us here who will be happy after this is implemented. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm the first speaker. My name is Devine from the opposing side. 
uh, with, together with Sandrine, the second speaker, and Benita, the third speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, today's motion states that this house believes that making um, the Rwanda's economy with making Rwanda's economy cashless will create more jobs than those that we have today. So, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to start with what the uh, the proposition side had just uh, pointed out. They're saying that it will create more jobs because people we are going to be able to use. Um, to, to have jobs, those people that are mobile agents, they are uneducated and they still do this. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vision 2020 has in its pillar to have a knowledge-based economy. We don't want people to go on the jobs when they are not educated, ladies and gentlemen. Those people working in banks, they studied and, and, and we are actually um, achieving our vision of 2020. Secondly, she talked about ATM machines that are made by people. As she did not set the boundary, I'll set the boundary in Rwanda. If, if this cashless economy is providing job creation to Rwandans, they are not because these ATM machines are exported from other countries. We are we're spending money to get the ATM machines. We don't have people that do that in Rwanda. So we, we are not benefiting from this as in, in terms of job creation. You hear that? So to make clear my point, I'll talk about what we mean by job creation and job... Um, Yes, job creation. So job creation is where a person uh, himself uh, has a job and earns money to sustain himself. Ladies and gentlemen, the promotion of cashless economy is promoting the use of machines. And the places that the machines are working, people were working there. So the person was put out. And that person was getting a salary. He was getting money. And the money, he was using it to what? To consume. By consuming the money, his money, he was... Um, like, okay, let me give you an example. If I, if I was maybe a teller in a bank and I was earning a salary and at some point I'm saving my money for future use. For future use, I mean I'm maybe going to start another business. And when I start another business from the salary I got from, from being a tailor, I'll create a job for others, you see. But if the machines are actually being, I, I, doing my job, I'm not earning anything, ladies and gentlemen. Um, allowed? You, uh, you're saying that uh, people uh, who are educated, that you want people only who are educated. So I'm asking you, basing on today, we are basing on the current situation as we're saying that more than we have today. Yes, exactly. You say that in two jobs, uh, you, you have said that, the, you say that this is going to be done within two years. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you that importing machines is putting out people and putting out people is reducing their sustainability. Um, second point is that it reduces the skills and experience. You see, I, I could go to class and study um, accountants or maybe I don't know what, because I believe I'll be a cashier in a supermarket. But if the machine is going to do the job, who am I going to study? This is discouraging the education system, ladies and gentlemen. Thirdly, it is, li um, um, it is limiting the employment multipliers, as I said, ladies and gentlemen. So when I have money, I'm able to consume the money, give it to, uh, like, when, uh, like maybe going to a job, uh, going to a supermarket and spending my money. So the, the person is earning money. But if I don't have money to spend and the money I was getting it, uh, uh, from my salary, being a cashier and the machine is doing my job, ladies and gentlemen, you're discouraging me. So, your point? Oh God, it is related. A, a, a tailor, when job creation, like I have a job as a tailor in a bank, but as the ATM machines are increasing, people will not come to the bank to withdraw the money. They're going to withdraw the money from, from machines at their places. So this will reduce the number of the tailors in a bank, see? Because people used to come and line up on the line in a bank to, to, to withdraw the money. But now the machines are doing it. So the tailor, they're going to reduce. You get the point. Ladies and gentlemen, um, as you can see, uh, uh, bringing in uh, the use of machines in our economy is going to reduce the job creation. We're not saying that we don't need a cashless economy in the country, but we're saying that it is not, it is not uh, creating any job creation in our country, ladies and gentlemen. So, if thank you for your attention.
Thank you, the current speaker, uh, uh, dear judges. Uh, I'm here on the um, proposal side, proposing the motion which says that this house believes that making Rwanda's economy cashless will create jobs more than what we have today. Uh, uh, according to the motion, we are comparing the jobs that we had before our economy was cashless and the one that we created after. Before, uh, I have a report from 2000 and which uh, shows the increase of employment uh, from 2010 to 2016. According to the New Times, uh, they show us that uh, in 2010 we had 1,448 uh, Agents, I mean those mobile money agents and bank agents, but they raised to 59,952 agents in 2016. Those are, those are new people who are being employed in new jobs that are created by the cashless economy. Is that number few? Is that number few to regret that uh, we don't have enough jobs after the cashless economy is here? Let's see about the ATMs, which raised from 84 to 4,004 to 4, ATM machines uh, as of from 2010 to 2016 from the same source. We are saying about those ATM machines that were new, they require security guards. 4,004 security guards are employed. Even more than that because some work uh, from night and others work on the day basis. Those are almost 804 jobs being created by the rise of cashless economy. We are looking at what we have and what was brought by cashless economy, which would have not, have, which would not, have not happened otherwise if we had not introduced the cashless economy in our economy. Uh, another thing, let's see about uh, repairing and for those of us who study computer science, if we don't introduce a cashless economy, which means we will be needing to, uh, to, to go outside to, to complete our studies in computer science. Yet we could have created new jobs in this country. Let's take an example of ATM machines. I, I, act, I, I mean tap and go machines. I think I have one here. The tap and go machine created new jobs for new agents of tap and go. Everywhere on the bus stations or, or on the bus stops, you can find a tap and go agent. This is being created by the cashless economy that was produced by our Thank you for that. We are looking at what was brought new. We are looking at what was brought new. The tap and go machine is now everywhere. And actually, in Kigali, you, can, you, need, you don't need to have coins everywhere. We use the tap and go machine everywhere, not even an exception. Which means it has created agents on every bus stop that you go to. And another good thing about this is that no matter the level of education that you have, because those agents are only trade, even for two days. A kid of as uh, my former, uh, my recurrent speaker has said, can use it. It's just a matter of training for only two days, and you get to know how to use that machine. And another thing, let's see of those uh, electricity for those who buy it. Uh, you need to uh, like to access it, and they just type and they load your money. Those who are, who are doing that job, they don't need any level of education. And uh, the unemployment, the reason why unemployment rate is still high is because we, we still have a low education level. Of, uh, we still have low people who have completed master's or bachelor's degree or secondary. So it is created uh, even to those who don't have a big uh, high level of education. Thank you. Good afternoon, dear judges and the House at large, and by the names of Sandrine as the second speaker, I begin by refuting what their second speaker said. He said about the illiterate people that can do these jobs, but I imagine if the number of illiterate people that, he said that the education system is still low, and as we know, we now have even the nine years basic education for everybody, in order for everybody to access this education, and this is also not even relating to the motion that we had because as stated we have the motion that says that this house believes that making Rwanda's economy cashless will create more jobs than what what we have today 
And I begin by telling you that the co-drivers, you are telling me about the tap and go. I do believe it, it's good. Using this tap and go is very good and cute. But I wonder, the number of co-drivers who are using this, how many co-drivers are taken away? And you're telling me about the bringing of the agents, the agents of this tap and go. The number of co-drivers that are doing this job is very, very, very totally little to the number of the people who are introduced to use this tap and go agents. And another thing I'm going to tell him is, they were telling us about creating jobs, about importing, I, I mean, bringing the machines. And from the www, I give you time, from the www.bener.com, they told us that Rwanda had 84 machines in 2010, and now they're 4,004 4, in since December 2016, and they're all imported. Can you imagine? So what type, what type of job creation is this? They are importing, and imports are about one, uh, 156.1 million US dollars from outside. They're bringing all this from outside, and our people are not, are not given a chance to create their own jobs. So it means that we are doing nothing. No jobs are being created much more than what we had today. And I'm going to tell you about this. When we use this cashless economy, this cashless economy is promoting self-service, which I mean that People, the people who used to do this are now taken away and the people come and serve themselves. This I mean like the ATM cards. You know, like if the tellers were like five, now those tellers are replaced by only one person and that person is not going to help you in that. It's just going to be there to guide you or to do anything else in case you're doing your transactions. Means that the rest of the people have been denied the chance of having their job created. So now you are granted. The number of co-workers which, who were chased because of the introduction of the tap and go. And second, you say that import. You, you talked about something of imports. How is imports and being uh, like made of made in Rwanda related to the cashless economy, which is creating new jobs? Okay, as you said, I begin with that of imports. As you know, you were telling us that people are now going to make machines. You, you said the one who told us that they are going to make machines for bringing up this tap and go. But we have already told you that what, according to Benel, they say that they were all imported from outside. They created jobs from people who are outside, not in Rwanda. And since you didn't set boundaries, we set a new boundaries to Rwanda. So, dear judges, allow me to tell them that this is not a better way because we believe cashless economy is good, but it's not going to bring much more job creation than it was today. And as a conclusion, they say that this will be in two years. Please, can in two years, is it a very big time so that in two years, everybody, the, the jobs that are, were created will be much more than what we had today because of this cashless economy? I really, really think that this is not going to be put in action unless if Rwanda is the one who's going to create, I mean, Rwanda is the one which is going to create its own jobs through making its own machines and bringing back these people to be having their jobs. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to show you that when we, when Rwanda's economy, that Rwanda's, that when Rwanda's cashless, when Rwanda turns cashless, more jobs will be created. Um, first, I'll start by refuting what the second speaker has said. She has talked about how the, the tap and go cards will create less jobs. But I'd like to inform her that when the ATMs were brought, when these security guards now are now hired, now tell me, how, to, how would they have been hired if these, if these ATMs wouldn't have been brought? Now, let's go back to the tap and go cards. You have talked about the conductors, how some people are being chased away from the, from the, okay, from the buses because of the tap and go cards which have been brought. Have you considered that we still need the, the people who drive the buses? So how, how can you tell me that people are being chased away if the people are still driving the buses? How can you tell me that I'll go to town if there is no one to drive me? Second, do you realize that there are people who first check if someone is paying when they are using the tap and go cards? This means that th those people who are already that checking that money is being paid are still there to check that people are pressing the tap and go cards to so that they can go in. Second, I'd like to talk about the mobile money agents. Um, they, and we have seen that they have increased. We also know that the mobile money subscribers have also increased. And this is from New Times, from Darren Makumi, who works in Benair. So we have seen that the mobile money subscribers from 2010 to 2016 
have increased from two, around 200,000 to around 900,000. And this means that there will be more agents who will be working in the mobile money and this will be creating jobs. Okay, and we have also seen that the debit cards and credit cards have been increasing. And if they are increasing, that means that there are people who are checking that, this, that these debit cards are working well. If, for example, this card expires, there are people who are in charge to check that, to check that uh, new people can get this access to these cards. So this means that jobs are also being created. Um, there are also people who check that there is security for people who are using this cashless economy. Now, if we take an example of people who are dealing with computer science, do you realize that some people now are getting jobs because of this, um, because of these jobs which require internet and other things? So this means that people now who are studying computer science are now able to get jobs, and th therefore we are, we are seeing that people now are getting jobs. So this is an advantage to us. So how can you tell me that? Wait a minute. So how can you tell me that now people are not getting the jobs if you are seeing that they are even increasing? And people who are people who are in education even have hope that they will be getting jobs allowed. Now, okay, like I just said, I, I, I mean that if the people who are working in these in this, um, in this, in this agencies are increasing, I didn't say that all people who are working in computer science will get jobs, and you are trying to see that the jobs are increasing, right? So the point is not that every person must get the job, but it is rather to see that it is creating more jobs. So this is what I had to argue, thank you. ...of job creation. This the additional jobs that are being created by this cashless economy means that the second speaker from the proposition side have been saying about the compare, comparison between the jobs that we had before and the jobs that will be created after. Ladies and gentlemen, I have tried to make a, a small summary about the jobs that we had before and the jobs that will be created after this introduction or, or development of this cashless economy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been saying about the transportation. We had the drivers and co-drivers before. And now we have drivers and the agents that you have been saying. But let's take ex an example in um, bus station of Nyabugogo. We, we have many buses there. And before, each, each bus had a co-driver. But now there are no co-drivers, only drivers. You have been saying about the jobs that we had before. Yes, we had these buses. We had the drivers and we had the co-drivers. But now we had drivers and one, only one agent in transport. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll continue. Uh, they have been saying about the cashier and security guard. Before, we had a cashier and a security uh, guard, but now we have an ATM and a security guard, which means that before, yes, we had this uh, cashier and security uh, guard. You have been focusing on the security guards, but we had the security guards before. But where, what about these cashiers? Where will they go? Which means that this cashless economy will never increase this job creation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm telling you, oh, yes, I've got your point. I'm telling you that. So you are going to tell me that the co-drivers, I'll be the one to check. Do they have that, that skills and knowledge? It means that the, if there is RFTC, it, it is there to transport people. It was there even before. It means that the people to check this transportation were there even before. And they will be remaining there. But the co-drivers will not be the one to replace those ones. It means that the co-drivers will be chased away. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me well. The motion of today is saying, will really cashless economy lead to more job creation than what we have 
today. Ladies and gentlemen, the opposition side have been uh, setting many points and we have... Ladies and gentlemen, if this uh, <coughs> cashless economy is developed, it means that there will be more and more introduction of those machines. And where we go, those people who used to work um, in, the, in the place of those machines, where will they go? It means that it won't create jobs, rather it will chase some people out of their jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, this uh, conclusion that we have, the cashless economy will rather chase people out of their jobs than creating the additional jobs. Thank you for your attention. You come on our side. Dear audience, as our motion was saying, it was saying that the cashless economy in Rwanda is going to provide more jobs to the people, more than that we had today. The proposition side, I'm going to try to show you how the proposition side showed us the job questions that were made, but for us, we, we have been, um, uh, we refuted showing you how many people lost their jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, they said uh, the computer science engineers will have a place for making the ATM machines, but we said cashiers will lose their jobs because they won't do their job as the machines do them. Ladies and gentlemen, they said one agent by bus park will have a job, but we said 200 co-drivers are going to lose their jobs. They did lose their jobs already. Ladies and gentlemen, we said that uh, when, when someone we said that the cashless economy will limit the employment multiplier. They never tackled this point and it's very strong. Ladies and gentlemen, we said how we, we have showed you, by the example of the bus park, we showed you how the numbers of the people that are being employed today are not covering the, 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 the gap of the people that are not being employed. And this shows that the cashless economy is not driving anywhere to job creation. Ladies and gentlemen, as a matter of fact, cashless economy is a great thing. It is convenient to the people, but it's not providing any jobs to people. But the use of machines are limiting them, ladies and gentlemen. So, so by, by, uh, by weighing these facts that were given, ladies and gentlemen, using the cashless economy will, will help us in other sectors. Will, uh, it's convenient to us in other ways, but it's not providing us jobs, but rather it's chasing people from their jobs because machines are giving, being given places. I raised my case. Oh God, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it seems most of us here are not understanding, including this team here. First of all, we want to ask, are, are all people educated? According to now, we, we are just looking at the action plan, I mean the status quo now. Look at who are working, look at, you're saying that ATMs, that they were imported. Yes, they're imported, but if even, uh, even the mechanics also imported. Are those security guards working on them imported? Do they come with people following them? First, show us how exactly people will not get jobs, yet these 404 security guards are working on ATMs. Look at all the drivers, look at programmers, industries, look at all industries, look at all these 8.6 people who are employed in people, 27% of them are uh, employed in cashless. Look at, you should show us statistics for the employment on, on, based on job, uh, for the employment without uh, cashless. You should have showed it to us. Look at, uh, from ATMs being important. You should explain how those ATMs will be uh, working alone. Since you're, you're meaning that if they're employed, then there are no jobs going to be created. We asked you to prove how uh, people are chased, these code drivers. Yes, they were chased, but how about people who make those cards? Weren't they employed? Look at people who didn't, who didn't study. They were employed. Yes, they were employed. That is what we want to say. And uh, we showed you how new jobs have been increased. But we, we said... Um, 
Uh, her PS increased from 99 terminals in 2010 to 1885 in 2016, and bank and mobile money agents increased from 1448 to 5995 to 2010 to 2016. And this was based on an article Doreen Makumi 217 in NewTimes.co.co. We answered you that. Uh, you, uh, you, you, you said that what skills does it really require? But we had catered for it in the action plan. Thank you. Uh, just a few remarks. It was a good debate. Uh, however, I won't say that I'm really happy. And I'm just, this is just going to be general. I mean, number one, I expected more. I expected more forms of job creation other than Ascaris, because those ones have been there since time immemorial. So that really did not come up. Then issues of things of setting boundaries and your years, people. Always these things are are really critical when you, because you cannot have a, a, an action plan without a boundary. If you have an action plan and you don't have a boundary, that already defeats the entire logic. Then alternatives. You don't come and tell me that people are going to lose jobs because people have been losing jobs because of very many things. So how do we deal with this? What do we put in place? Huh? So that was also something uh, to do what? To not. Otherwise, I wish you the best.